Since the dawn of time, man has been curious. And for almost as long, the Vibes Broadcast Network has sought the truth. Investigate. Discuss. Explore. Okay. Maybe in other episodes, but this one is just... Listen to the Vibes. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes, and I am very happy to have Miss Carrie Barrett here, uh, a fellow Austonian. Is our Austinite? How do we say that? Austonian, Austinite. I think it is Austonian. Yeah. Okay. Austonian. Yeah. See, I always Austinite or Austinite. Yeah, either one of those works. I mean, it was easy for me when I lived near Houston because it's Houstonian, and that. But you know, I, I never, I don't, I never knew Maybe what it was called. Maybe it's Austinite. Now that I say that, there's a there's an apartment building in downtown Austin called the Austonian, which I'm sure you have to be a gajillionaire to live in, but. Probably. Uh, I think it's Austinite. Let's go with Austinite. Okay, that's good. Uh, just it's just beautiful to be around Austin. I love it. But anyway, she is a co- a host and a producer of podcasts. And being that we're in the same sort of realm, and she's got a great story to tell, I, I have to have her on my show. Uh, found out we both have come a long way from being obese and losing a lot of weight. Mm-hmm. And uh, but you're more of an athlete um i i unfortunately am not (laughs) but uh but we we're going to talk mostly about the podcasting and stuff and then anything else you want to talk about we're going to do so tell us about you Mm. well i have been a i guess now 24 year austinite austonian (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> whatever we landed on i moved to austin when i was 24 years old and i was in radio and that's what brought me to austin from ohio so oh, wow. I, I grew up in the buckeye state uh in columbus so un, uh I guess uh, <laughs> I take a lot of hassle for that too, because I am a huge Buckeye fan, which unless you are from Ohio, no one likes the Ohio State Buckeyes, but but this girl does. So um, I moved here because I was in the radio industry and I was, I sort of did everything I did. I pulled some on-air shifts in my early twenties and I was also marketing and promotions director for some radio stations. So when I moved to Austin, I was uh, hired to be the promotions and marketing director for Case and KVET radio country stations, big, huge country stations. And it was, let me tell you, it was eye-opening because while I worked for country radio in Columbus, Mm -hmm. Columbus wasn't the embodiment of country right and so in my brain moving to texas i was picking up and moving to texas and i just had in my brain tumbleweeds the whole get you know that just just like every stereotype you could imagine (laughs) i had it and i got off the plane in austin went downtown and i saw all of these people thousands of people walking and running around Lady Bird Lake. It was called Town Lake at the time. Now it's Lady Bird Lake. And I just remember my mind being blown. First of all, it didn't look at all like the Western that I thought it was going to look like. And second of all, I was like, is there a race going on? Because why are so many people out walking and running and enjoying this beautiful day? They're on the lake rowing and, and, then it took a while, but I just realized like, oh, this is Austin. This is Austin. It is an outdoor town. It's the small town feel. It's gorgeous, gorgeous city. And people want to be here because they want to be outside doing things. And I was not that girl at the time. (laughs) That's for sure. For sure. I was not. I love going to Lake Travis and getting in the water and you can actually see your feet when you walk out into the water, which is something yes. you can't do when you're like around Galveston and all that. So. <laughs> yeah, I love it when people, you know, go to Galveston. They're like, we're going to the ocean. And I was like, OK, 
okay, yes, it is. I guess it is the ocean. You're Good right. Good luck with right. that. It's not, <laughs> it is not Saint Tropez, but it is the ocean. Yes. <laughs> you, you have to take a shower as soon as you get out of the water and go. So I'm sorry, but well, I've done triathlons down there too in the bay. Oh, yeah. Across from, you know, across from the actual seawall there, there's a, um, Oh my gosh, the hotel that looks like the pyramid. I, my mind is escaping me right now. I know what you're talking but, about. I can't think of the name of it. Yeah, but they have big races out there. Ironman puts on a big half Ironman distance race. So you swim in that bay mm. and you swim like 1.2 miles and you get on your bike and you ride 56 up and back on the seawall and then you run a half marathon. So Galveston yeah. definitely has its charm, but it's not the crisp, clear waters of Cabo San Lucas or anything. Uh, right. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, I will take Lake Travis over Galveston Bay any day of the week. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, right here where I live in Kyle, you go towards, uh, was it Dripping Springs and all that? And you've got the river over there and it's so gorgeous and the, the, the nature the animals, the, the, the trees, the plants, everything is just, it, it's very calming. And that's yes. where we get centered and, and you know, let's just settle yes. down right here. Oh, calm. Even for as big as Austin has gotten and and it's now the 11th largest city in the United States. It's huge, you know, with Tesla moving here and yes, Google and Facebook. I mean, there, it's, it's certainly the, the, the Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, of the east if we want to call we're, we're east of california but um even though it has gotten just so abundantly large there are still areas where you can escape the crowds yes. and find what you're speaking of that inner peace and just that quiet and nature and and reconnecting mm -hmm. back with why we're all here which you and i were talking about before we hit record you know we're all here on this earth to i think just spread good vibes and so we should. Uh, and be kind and be kind just be kind to each other oh my god how hard is that instead it's of not. i mean you're never going to win an argument by yelling at somebody and calling them names a I'm, amen. it just doesn't yeah amen i, I, I mean I if i ever got an argument and somebody's yelling at me that I, I shut them off right away yeah yeah i want to hear it and and I do remember that about Austin here again, too. Not that not that Ohio was like a super fast paced city, but the Midwest is a different vibe altogether. I mean, it's very there is just a hard work ethic. Mm -hmm. People are friendly, but they they keep to themselves a lot because you know there's it's cold a lot of times of the year so like you are isolated for a, a vast majority of the year and and but there was there was a kindness people are salt of the earth but it wasn't warm and friendly and then when i moved it to texas it was like howdy welcome <laughs> come on take your time take your time I am. What's the rush? You know, that was, of course, 25 years ago. It is not that way anymore, I don't think. But I do think that there is still some of that Southern charm. And I hope oh, that yes. our uh, I hope that our state adoptees, myself included, have have picked up on some of that and have brought that into their lives as well. I will say this moving from the Houston area to the Austin area, I had to learn to slow down quite a bit on the highway because mm -hmm. If it's 65 in Houston, then you better be going 90 or you're going to get run over. <laughs> that is true. If it's that 65 here, you got to go 55. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. In Houston, I think you're either going 90 or zero miles an hour, aren't you? Pretty much. <laughs> it is one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this town is known for a lot of people getting out and getting the exercise and, 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 of course, we're also known for our water burger. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says that to the vegan girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do have French fries. So. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> uh, I will never turn down a French fry. Trust me. <laughs> but we That's the great thing about Austin, though. There's such a mix of people there. You you know, you've got the hippie crowd. you got the, the kicker crowd. And, you, of course, you got your rockers and headbangers. I mean, just... A, a mixture of folks and uh, for the most part i see most people around here just want to get along and and you know like say howdy and all that good stuff but 
Um, let's get back to your podcasting. Being a Absolutely. podcaster myself, and I, I'm, I guess, relatively new. I've only been at it, I guess, about, I think we figured it was five years now. Um, I'm st- That's like a veteran in this industry. But really? I, yeah, yeah. Well, I know I've got a lot to learn, and I'm, I learn new stuff every day. I'm not too stubborn to learn more new tricks because I want this to be successful. Um, how do you help people to become successful in this area? Well, I, I think what I, how I will answer that is by sort of giving you the story of how I even got into podcasting because how I became quote unquote successful in podcasting and, and by successful, those are my standards. And we can even mm-hmm. talk about that because if I'm judging success only on number of downloads or sponsorships, then you would look at my podcast, which is called, I could never do that. And you would say, that's not a successful podcast at all because I am not, it's not a huge podcast in the world of downloads, but what makes, what makes it successful is a, I am becoming more and more consistent with it. Mm -hmm. I try to work really hard on the audio quality of it because let's face it, like that's what keeps people listening. The content's important, but you know, if, even if you've got, uh, you know, a celebrity on, if the audio is bad, you're just like, I can't, I can't listen to this. This is so annoying. So I really do try to work on the audio quality of it. Um, and then the other thing that makes, I could never do that a success is that it has led into so many other jobs in the industry for me. And so that's the advice that I would tell people, which is get clear about Mm -hmm. what you want. You know, what, what, if you want to start a podcast, like what is your show about? Get very, very, very clear on that. And it, and that it doesn't matter if you want to talk fantasy football or if you want to talk motorcycles, or if you want to talk uh, your stamp collection, it doesn't, the subject doesn't matter because there's going to be an audience for anything that you put out there. You just have to be very clear yourself and Mm -hmm. be very passionate about the subject that you're speaking about. Um, You and I, our show, you know, I could never do that. It's, it's pretty broad. What, and same thing with like, listen to those vibes. Um, We can almost talk to anybody. Because yes. w- what we're trying to do and what my mission with I Could Never Do That is, is to deconstruct when people say the phrase, oh, I could never do that. I could never um, start a podcast. I could never do an Ironman triathlon. I could never, uh, I mean, I've write, write a hit song. Um, I've talked to the people who have done that and deconstruct the steps that they took. Mm. So I'm very clear about what my podcast is about. What's cool is that I, it allows me to talk to people from all genres and all backgrounds because yes. yeah, people are doing things all over this planet that are amazing. And yes. it's not just, it doesn't just have to be an athletic achievement or an academic achievement. It, it you know, I've, I, I interviewed early on, I actually, for I could never do that. I actually interviewed a Catholic priest because, hey, I, I could never do that. <laughs> they, they won't <laughs> let me. Um, <laughs> I've had and, one on my show. Yeah, and and I, you know, I grew up Catholic, and I am, am always fascinated with um, the teachings and some of the dogma that I may or may not agree with, even though I identify as. Uh, and, and so we got to deconstruct that and, and how he was called to change careers. Cause he was a, he was a, an electrical engineer or something like that. Maybe a chemical engineer, wow. like he had gone to college. He had, uh, was in the workforce. He was just a normal guy and, uh, and completely pivoted in his life because he felt very strongly called to, to go to seminary. So anyways, that's a very long winded way. Uh, of the advice I give, which is be very clear about what you want to achieve from your podcast. And then secondly, and this takes a lot of time, but start to make those connections with people that are going to help you get that. And we all know 
we're all like two to three degrees separated from each other in this world at this point. So I think we all know stories and the people that can help us make those connections. And, and you know, if you want to have a podcast that has guests, you have to be bold and make those connections. Mm -hmm. And it's very uncomfortable sometimes because you might get, no, we're not interested or maybe, that. maybe in six months yeah, reach back out to me in six months, which is the salesperson way of saying, yeah, no, thanks. Um, mm -hmm. but, but that's okay because for every no, you get, I, I have found actually I've gotten probably 95% yeses with people mm -hmm. and just a handful of no's. And I, I, I am amazed that people love to come on and talk about themselves and they love to come on and share their wisdom. Um, if the intention is pure, which it sounds like yours is and, and mine is. So, oh. um, yeah, the other, the, the, the coolest part about when I started, I could never do that because as a radio girl, as a former radio girl, I always, always, always wanted to do, uh, a podcast. Like once I started hearing about these things and I, I remember clipping an article out in like 2005. I remember clipping an article out of the newspaper that started talking about this thing called podcasting that Adam Curry from MTV had essentially created. And it, it was like, anyone can have their own radio show. I was like, are you kidding me? What? This is yeah. unreal. And it took me until uh, probably 2015 or 16. So I think you and I have been probably hosting around the same time to where I actually made the steps to make that happen and got all the equipment and getting over that first hurdle of getting all of the equipment that you need and getting it up on iTunes, you know, all of that, all of those things. Um, once I got that done, it's, it's been great. It's been great. And it has led into me doing work for other shows. So, uh, for instance, I produce four or five other shows for other people. And the first one I started to produce is one called the purple patch podcast, which doesn't mean anything to anyone unless you're in the world of triathlon. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I am. <laughs> and, uh, so the, the guy who I interviewed, his name is Matt Dixon. And he had written a book four or five years ago called uh, The Fast Track Triathlete. And Matt is very well known in the world of the sport of triathlon. He's a coach of many of the pros who've gone to Kona and done the big race on Hawaii. So it, again, if you're not in the sport, the name doesn't mean anything to you. And this is what you and I are talking about. Celebrities to me aren't celebrities to a lot of people and vice versa. So, yeah. but he was a celebrity to me. And he had coached world champions. And here I was interviewing him for, for my show. And uh, it went well, it went great. I read his book. I had, I asked what I thought were informed questions. And the next day he reached back out to thank me and said, Hey, you know, I've been wanting to start a podcast. Um, would you meet with my wife and I, his wife is his business partner. Would you meet with the two of us and consult with us? We have some questions. So Sure, of course. They, we got on the phone, and um, by the end of our phone conversation, they're like, "Okay, great, you're hired. We want you to produce it. We want you to get us everything that we need. Get us going. Get the artwork. Get the theme music. We're gonna fly you out to San Francisco, which is where he lives, and we want to meet you in person. Um, but like, you you've got what we need, and we would love for you to help us. And that was." four years ago, five years ago, and I'm still working with them, still producing wow. his show. Yeah. And it happened because he said, he said yes to an interview, but it happened because I asked him for an interview. Like I wasn't afraid. Well, I was afraid, but I still, in spite of that fear, reached out to ask if he would come on my show and mm -hmm. he said, yes. So it developed into a wonderful relationship. And a, a, another example that is similar to that is um, another gentleman who's a celebrity to me. His name is Rip Esselstyn. He lives here in Austin. He's written a book called The Engine 2 Diet, many others, Plant Strong. So he's former Austin firefighter, also a former professional triathlete. 
but he has written, uh, he's a plant strong athlete, plant-based athlete. So he's written books on how to achieve peak performance and rescue your health with, with the plant-based diet. So again, celebrity to me, not to many, yeah, well, he is celebrity to many other people, but yeah. So if you don't know, you don't know. And I had, it, it was because of him that I ended up switching my diet in 2009, just completely cut out all animal products and solve just vast improvements in my own health and in my own athletic performance. So he was an idol of mine um, wow. and a mentor just, and he didn't know it. He didn't know me. And lo and behold, 10 years after, almost 10 years to the day after I made the switch because of his first book, he agreed to an interview with me. And um, that, that was like in 2020, 20, actually probably 2019. And yeah, it was 2019. And I've been working for him ever since. So I now produce his podcast every oh, week. Wow. And, and I'm on his team and helping him, uh, he and his team develop like his own food lines that are in whole foods and all of this stuff. So I, Remarkable. I know I've just rambled on, but, but the lessons therein, I think are, you just have to ask and you never know what's going to come, come of I'm, anything. What, I mean, what if somebody does say no, I mean, it's not going to hurt you. Uh, you're no worse off than what you were before you asked. So, uh, you know, like you said, about 95% of the people I asked, will say yes. And there's some of them are people I never thought I'd ever get to talk to. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. it's just getting to know even the people in your own area. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, a celebrity off in California or New York or anything. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm tell you quick, a couple of quick stories, but, Please, um, yeah. you know, we're on Alignable, which I, I have to praise. I love that app. Uh, I, I even like it better than my LinkedIn and I LinkedIn is one of those I love to get mm -hmm. um, guests from, but um, there's a gentleman who lives 20 minutes from me right there in San Marcos. Um, he's an older gentleman. I, I want to say he's probably in his eighties. Uh, okay. But um, I noticed he was an author and, and a songwriter and I'm like, wow, an author and a songwriter living right here. So had him on my show and ended up, meeting up with him at Whataburger, amen. Um, and, um, <laughs> French fries, <laughs> <laughs> but sat down and had this conversation, found out that he had been on Broadway. Oh He's had gosh. three musicals, three plays that have been produced and performed. He was friends with the guy who wrote Chicago. <gasps> um, he wrote a song that had been, uh, recorded by Barbara Streisand and had all these wonderful books and, and i'm like oh, guys 20 minutes from me and now i have a new friend all because it took the time to reach out to somebody i had no idea had all this going on and some people they just want to they just want to tell about themselves you know they, mm -hmm. they, they there's some kind of uh, significance in getting to tell about yourself um I, I don't know about you when i decided to get into podcasting i got one of those it's basically a podcasting for dummies type book, you know, <laughs> and I'm like I'm going to read this book and I'm going to do everything it says. So it gives us line out of, Oh, you need to, to write out all these questions and do this and blah, 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 blah. And so I did it exactly as the book and I sounded like a robot, you know, absolutely not authentic at all. <laughs> and, and that is like, that is another great point, which is, you know, there are online webinars that will tell you how to do this. There are courses that you can pay thousands of dollars that are going to tell you how to ask really good interview questions and grow your podcast audience to the millions. And none of those, none of those are innately worth their weight in gold because it is what you make it. And Definitely. you have to, you have to come at it from an authentic perspective. And I love that story about the gentleman that you Matt in San Marcos, because he's probably, to quote Dos Equis, the most interesting man in the world. And he really is. You should listen <laughs> to this guy. No one would ever know <laughs> if you wouldn't, if you didn't bring his story to life. And, and if he didn't 
offer his time to you. And mm -hmm. that is the most precious gift we can give to people is our, is our time and our energy and, and our wonderful stories. And so, yeah. And alignable. It's so funny. I never, I, I, I shouldn't say never. I, I see, I get email notifications of like, this person wants to connect with you or whatever. And mm -hmm. I kid you not, Kyle, yours was the first one that I connected with and actually corresponded with back and forth to wow, get to this thank point. You. Yeah, you're welcome. And it, and it was because we have that shared drive of telling stories through podcasting. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if I can meet and get to know another podcaster who's, who's vision of life is very similar to mine. And that's just, we want to spread positive energy in the world. Mm -hmm. um, how could I not benefit from talking to this gentleman? Oh, and, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. My pleasure. My pleasure. Well, there's so many people in Austin that have incredible stories to tell. Uh, I met a young lady the other day who works for uh, uh, a couple of radio stations there in, in Austin. Uh, was it KUT and KUTX? Mm -hmm. And uh, young lady has great insight. It's just a matter of taking the time to get to know somebody. It could be your neighbor. Uh, mm -hmm. Where I used to live in Cedar Park got out and met my neighbor next door and he we always heard him playing his drums and um, never really said too much because it wasn't too too disturbing but went out and talked to him found out he had been on the road with uh what was the name of the band um I have a brain fart here uh well anyway i'll spend the next 10 minutes yeah, trying it, to think it'll of the name hit of it. you yeah no it'll hit you it'll hit uh, you flotsam later. and jetsam Oh, I, I've never heard of that band. You have to look them up, but okay. Flotsam and Jetsam, uh, Jason Newstead, who used to be with Metallica, that was his yeah. band before he was with Metallica. And, and I'm like, oh my God, this guy had played drums with all these different bands and stuff. And just because I got out and got to know my neighbor. It's yes. And I do think that that inherently is the takeaway in all of this mm -hmm. is do not be afraid to just get to know people who would otherwise be strangers. And when people say I could never do that, my question back to them is, is, do you really feel like you could never do that? Or do you just not want to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I, that's I what it boils say, down to. I, yeah. And, but if you really want to do something, you have to put yourself out there a little bit. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, I could say, oh, I could never climb Everest. The truth is i don't ever want to climb everest like i just <laughs> i don't want to so like that's a big difference differential between not thinking that i can mm -hmm. and uh and i want people to at any moment in their life be able to look at themselves and say everything that i ever wanted to try and really 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 wanted to try in life I did it. And it's a shame that we don't allow ourselves that freedom to do it. And mm -hmm. I think sometime after what high school or something, we get slightly institutionalized into our thinking about, I have to do this. Now I have to go get a job. That's now the I'm way I was. To start a family. Now I'm supposed to work in the same role in a boring cubicle for 40 years or what, whatever it is. Like we, we, we lose the sense of play. And mm -hmm. for me, play has become podcasting. I mean, let's face it. We're, we're, you and I are playing radio. <laughs> like it's fun. I get to relive my youth again. And also for, for me, that other play happens to be athletics. I love to run. I love to ride my bike. I love to play mandolin. I love to, uh, I've been in sketch comedy troops. Like I'm definitely one of those people that's like, I have thrown a lot of shit at the wall and seeing what sticks because I've, I'm interested in so many things. Um, and I think for you, it's music as well, right? Don't you? Oh, I love music. Yeah. I do. Yeah. My, yeah. Do you, you love mandolin, huh? Oh, I love, yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I look, I'm looking off camera cause I'm looking at my mandolin right now. My, yeah. my cousin, Mike Compton, he played mandolin on uh, that song, man, a constant sorrow. Oh, no way. Shut mm -hmm. up. Look it up. 
only uh, 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 only the biggest bluegrass song out there <laughs> pretty <laughs> right. much yeah 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 <laughs> and you know it's amazing too is sometimes even that guy that may be the janitor at the local high school he might have a great story to tell they all do that's just it like your your parents probably have great stories to tell my parents they were just blue collar working family from Ohio, but my God, do they have amazing stories. Mm -hmm. If we just sit, if we just ask, uh, another, a, an interview that is one of my favorites that I did on, I could never do that. And it's been a long time. It's been a few years was, um, speaking of South Austin and, uh, and beyond, but in San Marcos and in Wimberley, there's a woman named, uh, Susan Gibson. She's a singer songwriter very popular. I think she grew up, I want to say near Lubbock in that area and was with the band called the Groobies in the early nineties and the band broke up. Well, Susan Gibson has become a solo artist over the last couple of decades. And she is famous for writing the song wide open spaces by the Dixie chicks. Really? And yeah. And she lives, you know, she's your neighbor basically. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so I, I had taken a weekend songwriting um, re retreat with her and was transported into another galaxy of greatness. Like she was so phenomenal and so kind and was one of those people that just gave her entire weekend for, for the class that she was working with. And um, I asked her and another songwriter from San Marcos named Jana Pocop, who's also an amazing songwriter. I asked both of them to be on the podcast and sure as shit, they said yes. So like, again, to hear the songwriter of, um, you know, like it or not, one of the biggest country songs ever, Wide Open Spaces by the Dixie yes, Chicks, I or the Chicks that. now, um, it, like t to like talk to the songwriter the person who first envisioned that song it to, to me like there is no better feeling in the world like it is it is a rush for me to do that oh my gosh it, it, it is when you get to know here's something else before i forget this thought because i i have the squirrel moments but uh the older generation that's starting to to die off talk to these folks not only do they need someone to talk to, but some of them have some stories that can be very inspirational to you. To hear my grandparents talk about living through the depression and World War II and things like that. I mean, my grandpa was on a battleship during World War II. These, and now that they're gone, I wished I had recorded those before they had passed away because they had great stories that could really get you through some tough times. And I'm sorry, but a lot of these folks, they're, they're passed away. Even the people around my age are starting to pass away on me. And uh, mm -hmm. one thing I do like to do is go back and try to find some of those guys that made hits back in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s and try to get some re renewed interest in them. Not only were there great songs, but these people have great stories to tell. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah got to be friends with Dan Denneman, who was uh, in the band, the circle. And if you remember the song, red rubber ball, mm -hmm. that was always on my playlist. I just loved that song and uh, got to meet Kevin Godley, who was the drummer for 10 CC. If uh, you remember, uh, I don't I'm not no. in love and Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Things not we do for love. love. That's all. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, know. like those, you know, these people were making hits and doing great things before every, yeah, you know, obviously before there was social media, before there was any media, really, like mm -hmm. they just, <laughs> they wrote great records. And, uh, so of course they would be honored to be able to share some of these stories because there are so, there are thousands of those people that wrote hits that no one ever seeks out because everyone wants to seek out, uh, the, the singer, you know, they want to, they, they want to seek out the chicks when Susan Gibson is the one who created the art to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I, I've always been fascinated with the person behind the That's scenes a little bit too. more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I like that is the story. And I say this over and over again too, on 
on I could never do that, which is I would much rather be the uh, an assistant coach on a Super Bowl winning team than the head coach of a shit team, mm. you, you know? And so that's why I love producing for other people so much because I am, I am part of their team and I'm an integral part of their team, but I get to let them shine. You know, they, they get to have their face on the podcast cover art. And I am more than happy to make them sound as good as I possibly can and let them do their thing. And I get to be a supporting role in what I think art is a great product for them. I, I got to tell you another story now that it came back to me. Um, you're talking about the sound quality. Mm -hmm. um, I, have you ever seen that show, Extreme Cheapskates? No. Okay. No. Basically what it is, is that it's one of these TLC shows. Um, I've, I've only seen the, the one episode and it was only because I met the guy that was on there that I watched it. But uh, you'll get somebody that does these crazy things to save money, you know, like boiling okay. the same water over and over again to make spaghetti or, you know, hot dogs and that kind of thing. Yeah. So here's this one guy, his name's Mark Parisi. And Mark was on the show because he would, uh, he would like search for money in between the cushions at restaurants and things like that. Uh, he was trying to, to sell his, uh, testicles for money and, oh you know, just all this crazy stuff that he would do to save money. And so I'm doing the interview with him and I met him on LinkedIn, by the way. Okay. But um, I'm doing the interview and he was so cheap that he was using the Wi-Fi at the Washeteria down the street. And, <laughs> and so wow. the, the quality was terrible, but it's one of my most viewed videos out of all of them. And I don't know why. But it's unbelievable. <laughs> Probably because everyone's got to see what this thing looks like, right? They've got to see, <laughs> they've got to see what the quality of this looks like. A wonderful man. Wonderful man. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's, he's a little out there, but I mean, aren't we all a little bit out there, uh, right? Yes. Yes. That's why we live in Austin. Because uh, <laughs> we get to be a little out there. Amen. <laughs> and and I, I think you hit on some important topics there of just, we know that you need to reach out to these people. We know you need to extend yourself a little bit. And now the way you connect with people is almost unlimitless. You know, you mm. found me on Alignable, which helps to put you in touch with neighbors and uh, other community people. And mm -hmm. I know that they're LinkedIn. I'm not a huge fan of LinkedIn only because I don't use it. Like I, I have a profile on LinkedIn, but I like, I actually really don't use it to, to connect with people. Um, although it is probably one of the best ways I use more Instagram serious. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, whereas Instagram I use just because I know a lot of the people I know are posting or I'll follow them. And, um, if sometimes I can slide into their DMS a little bit and send them a direct message or most of the time though, the people that I'm getting on the show are like friends of friends, or I'll have I've done that too. A connection, get us, set us up together. Um, or, or now knock on uh, granite, which is what I'm talking on, but the, uh, I've had a couple of people reach out to me and say, I like your show. I like the theme of your show. Uh, would you consider having either me or this, this person that I represent on the show? So uh, they've just written a book or are releasing an album or whatever it happens to be. And that's how I've gotten a few of my, my uh, interviews as well. But you know, some of the more powerful ones are people that I know or have some kind of personal connection with. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we can all interview somebody who's written a book and we might not know them, but there's something innately vulnerable and very powerful when you're talking to somebody that, you know, and they're sharing stories. Um, a recent episode I did earlier this summer was with a friend of mine who's 46. Um, and she was badass athlete. Like I've known her in the Austin running and triathlon scene for, I mean, 20 years. And, uh, 
she was recently diagnosed with young onset Parkinson's disease. Oh. So the, the disease that has Michael J. Fox fighting for his life, you know? And um, so she reached out to me earlier this summer when she first got the diagnosis or she had even told anyone aside from her inner circle and people that needed to know, but it had not, she had not made it public at all. And she reached out and just said, uh, Barrett, you know, I, I don't know exactly what you do because no one does. Uh, but she said, I know that you tell stories and I know that you either write articles or you have your podcast and I would love to come over and just talk with you about this. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Like she, she herself was like, how do I want to spread this message and how can I help others? Um, and she and I sat down and we had what I think was an amazing hour and a half conversation about her disease. And my reactions to her were visceral because she was telling me things for the first time. And some of the struggles that she had been going through and some of the fears that she has for her two teenage daughters. And, mm. uh, and it was, it was raw and you can't beat that. You can't no. beat that kind of a conversation. Those conversations are some of the best. Yeah. P person doesn't have to be famous to have a good story to tell. Bottom line. You're right. Absolutely. I, Absolutely. Wish, I wish more people would realize that is sometimes that, like I said, that could be the janitor at the local high school or, you know, somebody working in the cafeteria. It could be that person taking your order down at the local restaurant. They might the say burger. at Whataburger, I mean, um, <laughs> uh, you know, th those those uh, stories of triumph. I said they could be the, the, the cashier at Walmart. You know what? I, I had to fight cancer the last few years and I finally overcame. Let me tell you what I did. Those are real stories. They can help people a lot. Just mm -hmm. taking the time to, to actually listen to these stories. What uh, got you into podcasting, Kyle? Oh, I'm, tur I'm turning the tables. Well, <laughs> since I'm being interviewed here, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I told you my wife and I are paranormal investigators. Yeah. And investigating is wonderful and I love it but I felt like there was more to be done. So I started interviewing people in the paranormal field. And then lo and behold, I was working security at a, a Comic-Con there in Austin. And um, Adrian Paul was there. Adrian Paul, if people don't know who he is, which I don't know why anybody wouldn't, but uh, he played the Highlander on TV back in the 90s. And he's, you know, he's a martial arts expert, the whole nine yards. And so I've, happened to walk by his table and stop to talk to him and i'm talking to him and we spent a good 20 or 30 minutes talking about uh, how to take care of arthritis so you know you're getting old when you're talking about taking care of arthritis <laughs> yeah, like when that is the topic du jour exactly well uh, he's not in the paranormal field but I mean, how could I not interview this guy? So I'm like, would, would you be interested in doing an interview? And he goes, yeah, here's my information. You shoot me a line and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get back with you. And sure enough, I was like, wow, there's more to podcasting than this, just this paranormal stuff. So I, I, uh, I decided to get into doing more positive stuff. And I was trying to stick with, oh, we're just going to bring positive vibes to everyone. But then it got to be you know what? People just want to, to talk about them. When I got, I think that's kind of turned things around for me because it used to be, Oh, I'm just, this is all about positivity. No, this is about people telling their story. Mm. Doesn't matter what they could be a musician. They could be an artist. They could be a writer, an actor, a life coach, whatever the case may, may be yep. an entrepreneur. You know, I've had architects on the, on the show and, um, you know, the people with health advice um, had people that talk about psilocybin and health. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's just so many people with interesting stuff to tell. And I think that's what we focused on when I did that. 
my subscribers have just grown exponentially. We've added almost 600 new subscribers in just the last two and a half weeks. Oh, that's fantastic. That is so fantastic. And you, and it's, you're striking a nerve. And I think what you and I are doing is jo doing our little part in this to, to like change the world just a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. just, and that sounds very self-serving and that sounds a little egocentric, but I think what we're just using microphones and some recording equipment to do that, but it, the same could be done when you're just out in public and it gets back to that kindness thing of just, you know, well, be, un be, unfortunately, be. um, I'm sorry to cut you off, but social okay. media and the media are dehumanizing people. And I think our job is try to humanize people again. Uh, thank you. I, could not have said that better. That is so true. I took all the news apps off my phone. Um, mm -hmm. I still have some of my social ones on there just because I need them for my client work. But of course, yeah, I just, uh, I, I, I can't be bothered anymore because that's all it is, is the bother. And, and we're all in our own little silos. And I'm only going to look at the stuff that, uh, that I agree with. You know, I'm only going to look at the news that fits in my narrative and I'm going to dismiss everything else. And that's just bullshit. It doesn't, yeah. life doesn't work that way. But uh, again, getting, getting sidetracked. I, I love, I love your story of branching out and starting with one thing, the paranormal, which is like this niche. And you and I were saying how I was talking about how much I love the paranormal. I'll have to tell you a paranormal story in my world, but um, yeah, <laughs> but, but then realizing that there are so many other interesting stories out there and that was the whole premise behind i could never do that it took me a long time to land on that podcast because for so long i was trying to figure out what my niche was this was part of my process of trying to get clear mm -hmm. on yes i want to start a podcast what do i want it to be about and i went down my usual two rabbit holes, which are, um, well, I could do a show about veganism. Ew, gross. No one wants to hear the vegan girl talk. Okay. Like, and there are and like, I mean, I joke about it I, because ew. Um, <laughs> and there are great shows out there that fit that. And there, I don't, I don't have anything new to offer or anything <laughs> better to it's, offer. As long as you're not like there. the vegan teacher. Uh, no, 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 I'm not. Uh, I'm the vegan student always. Um, no, the, and then the other realm that I was talking about was like, oh, should I go down the triathlon realm? Cause I write for triathlon magazine or triathlete magazine. I was writing for a couple of other different publications. And so I could interview triathletes and about their process. And again, it's a passion of mine. I have the connections it would be an easy grab, but there, there are many shows that do that very well. Thank you very much. You know, like that niche was already met. So I'm like, what can I bring into it? And I am, as we have discussed ad nauseum, like I am so fat infatuated with the process of doing something that you never thought you could do. And I'm so obsessed with how do people do great things in this life. Like these things that are seemingly impossible mm -hmm. to many of us, how do they do them? And that's when it hit me. So it took a while to get to what do I want to talk about? And I was, a, I was inspired by a, a gentleman who <laughs> I wrote an article for him or on him for Austin Fit Magazine. His name's Tim. And he had a just an, a tremendous story. And so I was interviewing him because of his athletic background. And he was a, a super fast triathlete, trying to go pro, racing really hard, training really hard, and was in his like mid to late twenties and suddenly got very, very, very sick. And turns out that he was diagnosed with type one diabetes oh. and now suddenly he's on insulin pumps and it, 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 
all but crushed his triathlon career uh, and he had to start all over and learn how to do everything again because I, I don't have type one diabetes, but it's precarious balance of your blood sugar and what you can eat, what you can't eat. And if you train too hard, then you get low blood, you know, that it's a balance that I don't, again, I could never do that. And he told this inspiring story about how he came back and he found a way of eating that worked for him and it wasn't vegan. Um, it was actually quite the opposite. And, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's like, he's very, very low carb, very keto based, yes, um, myself. which, which like it, it worked for him and it helped manage him. And, and his story to me was so fascinating. And the way he told that story, I, I fell in love with this guy. We're not married, but I felt like I fell in love with him as a human and <laughs> like, it doesn't end. You it cougar. Doesn't end that, like, yeah, yeah, right. It doesn't end that well, but, um, as a human being, I fell in love with this guy because he had this funny ass sense of humor. He took it all with a grain of salt. He's got like five kids. He's very much in love with his wife, but I had to boil his story down into maybe like an 800 word article for the magazine. And by the time it got edited and I had took out a few of his quotes, it was what I thought was a good article about him, but there was so much on the table on my mm. recorder that was never going to see the light of day. And I, at that moment was like, nope, he is the reason why I want to start this because the story the interesting story is coming out of his mouth, not my 800 words that I'm putting on a piece of paper. Wow. So that is how I finally got myself over my fear and my hump and was like, I, this is, these stories have to be told. And he's gone on now to, he and his wife started a keto ice cream company that is now nationwide called Mammoth Creameries. I think you can could find it damn near anywhere, probably ATB. I know, I know a lot of the special like central market, um, whole foods, but I'll have to yeah. look. Yeah. Mammoth creameries and it's, it's he and his wife's company. Mammoth creameries. Okay. Cause I'm yeah. type two and I have to okay. have low carb. And so I look for different keto types of, uh, alternates for yeah. different yeah, foods. You have to and check that out. And they, and yeah, they developed it basically because I'm gonna write that down while I'm thinking yeah, about it. Yeah, mammoth. It's I think it's got an elephant as the logo as their mascot, mammoth creameries. Mammoth creameries. Okay. Yeah. And the guy's name is Tim Krause. And I think his wife's name is Susan or Suzanne. I'm I've not met her before, but well, see, there's something else that I learned today. And yeah, all all go. because you get people on your show that you probably normally wouldn't talk to. Yep. Exactly. Amazing. Exactly. Well, you know, my, here's my other piece of advice is if you want to do something like that, don't wait, just do it. Just start. And if you make mistakes along the way, you make mistakes. You learn from your mistakes. Oh my gosh. How many mistakes have I made through the years, but mm -hmm. you get better mm -hmm. and listen to criticism. You know, don't, don't turn off the comments. If somebody has something to say, no matter how negative it might seem, um, try doing something a little different, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And take your time. Take your I time. think take your time with all of it, because I do know that starting a podcast can be very, very overwhelming for people because you get lost in the, at least I did. I got lost in the language of it. I'm not, I'm not a, I'm a radio geek, but I'm not an audio geek. So you can, turn on a YouTube video and you're going to have somebody tell you that you need to have the most expensive microphones and, and you, you need don't. to have mixing boards and that you need to have, you know, soundproof walls in your house and you need to build a studio and you need to take this class and you need to, and, and you're right, Kyle, like you don't, do you need a microphone? Yes. Uh, it helps. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you need a way to record it? Yep. You know, there, there are things that you do need and there are non-negotiables. But mm -hmm. I encourage people to either reach out to somebody like you or me to find out what works for you. Like, yeah, I can't afford a $10,000 studio in my house. So be nice. 
what yeah it'd be freaking awesome but you know what 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 do i need and then what are the steps that you took um to to go from concept to art to name and then you there's like there is a whole onboarding process with finding a hosting site and getting your first show or your trailer up on iTunes so that that gets going, that gets the ball rolling. So that, yes, there are things that are overwhelming in that initial startup phase, but I think of it in terms of anything that anyone does. So if you want to run a marathon, it's the same overwhelm, you know, we're all thinking like, oh my God, I could not run 26.2 miles. That's way overwhelmed. I could, there's no way. Okay. Well, do you have shoes? Cause you need that. So let's start there. Right. Let's start with shoes. <laughs> like, okay. Are there any, um, Facebook groups or online groups or in-person groups that you can join in your local community or Instagram follow like, uh, people that you can follow, like find, put yourself in contact with people who are going to help you. Mm -hmm. And those are the little initial steps. And then that way, like the big thing at the end doesn't feel that daunting once you've set yourself up and put yourself it's in true. these situations. Um, you know, I, I, I'm going to be taking ski lessons for the first time this winter coming up and I am scared to death. Like I, and I think it's because like uh, you and I were at the age where like shit breaks <laughs> and it stays broken. <laughs> we're not uh, eight years old yeah. <laughs> where you just bounce back up and continue down the mountain. Like I'm so afraid because I know that there are repercussions when I fall and it hurts and it can hurt for a long time. So I am taking it one step at a time. So like, instead of just going to the mountain and trying to work my way up on the slope, like signed up for lessons. These mm -hmm. lessons happen to include all the equipment I'm going to need because I don't have any of it. So I, it includes all of the skis and the helmet and everything. It includes an instructor. So taking, I'm taking those little steps to achieve something that right now scares the hell out of me. And I'm hoping that by February, I can do a part two of this interview and tell you that like, oh my God, I skied some blues today. I skied, like I did it. I made mm -hmm. it happen. So you know everything it it does start out a little overwhelming you do a little bit at a time and you, you get that experience when you get a little bit more experience you get a little more confidence things get a little bit easier i i say maybe look for a facebook group or something that does podcasting that you can share advice with uh, a lot of my first equipment i got in garage sales just went out and found stuff mm -hmm. in Craigslist. garage sales yeah. Craigslist is another good, I've sold, there you go. I've sold off some of my equipment that I don't need anymore. I've sold off some of it at Craigslist and or eBay. eBay is a great way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I think, think about other times in your life when you have achieved something that you didn't think you could achieve, whether it's passing a test or finding the man or woman of your dreams or having a baby or, you know, whatever, whatever those things are that it got you landed a job that you really didn't think that you could get and mm -hmm. you got it. Um, we've all done things in our lives that we're very, very proud of. And we did the same steps to get to those things. We just maybe don't, don't recognize it anymore because it's, it was so long ago, or we feel like it just happened and you just got lucky or whatever, but the, the luck does not happen without work. Um, it's true. You have you to know. do, you have to do some of the leg work. That's the thing. And Absolutely. You don't have to spend an arm and a leg. I, I say, just go out and get the, some of the cheapest stuff you can get that will mm -hmm. at least help you find out if this is what you really want to do. And as you go along, then you start to get a little bit better equipment. Um, I, I think I end up getting my best microphone. It was like at a FYE or uh fries or something i, oh, I yeah. forgot what yeah, it yeah, was yeah fries yeah yeah um and it didn't have to be an arm and a leg um youtube is a good place to find a lot of uh the stuff that you need and what i say by that i i had somebody that was supposed to help me with editing flaked out on me i hear i had these episodes what am i going to do found a, a 
a uh, program online and it was VSDC. You've got a free version. You got a paid version, got the free version, got on YouTube. I would watch about 15 to 30 seconds of the video stop. And I'd try to do whatever they were telling me to do. And I just kept doing it over and over and over again. I, I think it took me for a week, two weeks to before I finally got a little bit more confident where I didn't have to watch the videos anymore. Now I can do it in my sleep. Mm -hmm. it didn't happen yep. overnight. Exactly. You just, you just have to put a little bit of effort into it. Started out uh, with Spreaker and then I moved on to Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout sends everything out to iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spotify, you just, you name it. Yep. Yep. And then yep. got into the YouTubes and a few other, and you, you just, Take your time. Don't let yourself get overwhelmed and look for people that will help you. I guarantee you there's folks out there that will help you have no problems. I mean, to me, success is when you can help other people be successful. That is, I actually, I'm not kidding you, Kyle. I actually have that quote written uh, in my bedroom closet. I have a little bulletin board and I don't want to call it. It's like, it's not really a vision board per se, but I put words and quotes up there that are meaningful to me. So in the morning, I do see that, you know, when I'm getting ready and getting dressed, I, I see that board and I've got some stickers up there. And that is one of the quotes of like success really? to me is helping somebody else become successful. Absolutely. Yeah. Most I, of your successful people do believe that. So yeah. now if people want to get a hold of you, how do they do so? So um, the show is I could never do that. And that's the one that I produce. Um, I, I also have a, a website that's attached to that show. And I need to, <laughs> I, the domain. I could never do that is not mine. Unfortunately, that would be very, very, very costly to get. But uh, so I have... Um, a pod page with the show. So it's, so the email address is podpage.com forward slash. I could never do that. And that's the show website. It's got all the sh uh, episodes on there, all the places you can follow. It's got a link to find me. You can also find me on Instagram is probably the best. Um, there is an Instagram page for the show called I could never uh, and then actually I think it's called, I could never do that is the Instagram handle. And my own personal Instagram is try to be funny. And it's <laughs> T R I as in triathlon, T R I T O B E funny. And that's my Instagram. Now you can send me all those links. And so I can share them out. Uh, I will put Absolutely. that in the description. Well, well Karen, thank you yeah. so, so much. I appreciate your time and, um, pleasure. My for pleasure. answering me back and thank you for letting me be your first connection that was awesome yeah you that literally that that is that is so <laughs> true so thank you for uh taking the time to actually reach out and um i think this is going to be the first of many collaborations that would be awesome i would love that i welcome it uh, it's awesome. nice to to have somebody like minded that uh just wants to bring a little positivity into the world and help other people amen so Let's make each other laugh a little bit. Why not? It's it's <laughs> exactly. about time. You're wearing Dr. Giggles on your shirt right now. So it's a friend of mine <laughs> lives out in, in uh, West Virginia. Nice. Nice. And he is, he's hilarious. <laughs> but, um, well, I do hope you have a good Thanksgiving with your family and um, reach back out at any time. Let me know when the show goes live. I'll send you um, pick. I'll send you a pic or a couple of options for photos and, uh, and then my social handles. Please do. Cool. That way I can put that in the description and everyone can follow you. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, thank you for stopping by and I hope you'll come back. We have lots of interesting people like Carrie here. And if you're a regular to the channel, thank you for that support because it's because of you that makes me want to do what I want to do. And, your support is needed if we're going to carry on. And so until the next one, everyone, please take care. God bless and 
Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favourite podcasts. And on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network 